call to order our Wayne County Board of Commissioners meeting for November the 1st. Uh, Commissioner Cromarty will give us the invocation and then Commissioner Ray Mayo will lead us in the pledge. Please bow your heads. Almighty God, we come before you just to say thank you for a perfect earth, an earth that is filled with abundance that is put here for the pleasure and usefulness of mankind. Dear Heavenly Father, we're hoping that we'll all be able to share in those abundances. Dear Heavenly Father, we also want to give a special thanks to the responders who have been and were in place in our most recent endangerment with the hurricane. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for the cooperation and the decisions of our leadership here in Wayne County that will do the greater good for the greater group. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for the continued recovery of those who have suffered losses of homes, treasure, and peace of mind. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for the protection of our military who serves abroad, away from their families in dangerous situations. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask for the continued blessings for our current leadership and the respect for those. We continue to ask a special blessing for the potential leaders of our nation, whomever they may be. Father, finally, we ask for mercy for the families who have lost members in most recent times. And all these things in Jesus' name we ask, amen. amen. Stand and place your flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we're going to have a special presentation that evidently some of us are going to uh, get stuck this morning. Um, I think it is, in fact, incumbent upon us all to get our flu shots, and as a uh, symbol of that, uh, Ray uh, Mayo and myself are going to go down and get our shots along with several others. <laughs> so come on down, and then after that, um, if you all and the rest of the board will join us after we get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and a man of I got mine last time I went to the doctor. I got mine, yeah. You used to ask the big nigga on them. They'll give you yours in your hip. <laughs> You'll give it to me in the hill. <laughs> 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 Just as high as you can go. Pull that as high as it'll go. See if you can unbutton one more button. Did you want Thank <laughs> you. 
Senior Commissioner Mayo was prepared. He wore short sleeves. That's what I, I should have done. Oh, you didn't. You're all right. You're right.
to sleep. We wanted to have uh, at least five citizens to actually receive this so that you all can see that five people are not going to be killed as a result of this, that evidently it is safe. Now, this one is really in, in, important because if we give this to an, an, uh, to an attorney and he doesn't pass out over there, then evidently it's safe. <laughs> Also, I want to point out that the health department is giving flu vaccines uh, Monday through Friday from 8 to 11 uh, in the mornings and in the afternoon, 1 to 4. So uh, please, uh, if you need a, uh, in, uh, an inoculation against uh, flu, uh, please contact the health department. Again, Monday through Friday, uh, 8 in the morning to 11 uh, in the morning and in the afternoons, 1 to 4. All right, here's the moment of suspense. <laughs> I gave Susan one of those truck signs. Somebody stole it out of the yard there about all. <laughs> we thank you so much for taking your time to come and get five of us inoculated today. Um, and please consider getting a flu shot. All right, we're going to uh, move on. Uh, I'll need a motion for the approval of the October 18th meeting. So much. All right, we've got a motion to approve the minutes of the October 18th meeting. All those, uh, any discussion on the motion? Not all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay, that's approved. And now discussion of any adjustment on the agenda. Removal contract that FEMA requires. Uh, so we're in the process of getting all of those out uh, today and should have that ready for the next meeting. Okay. Um, and the board will join me out front. Uh, we are going to have a presentation of county employee service people. <clears throat> to receive their pen to come forward and get their pen and to shake the hands of the Board of Commissioners. These are our one-year employees. Justin Boyette with the Detention Center. Lauren Carter with Animal Control. Nicole Duncan with the Health Department. Robert Garrett with the Sheriff's Office. Alton Lane with Wayne Nett. Jared Pennington with the Sheriff's Office. Can Candace, Candace Robinson with Emergency Services. Hunter Sasser with the Sheriff's Office. Heather Sellers with Emergency Services.
Miguel Torres with the Sheriff's Office. Fallon Williams with Social Services. Hannah Wood with the Health Department. Stephen Ash with the Sheriff's Office. Cody Beschel with the Sheriff's Office. Michael Blyer with the Sheriff's Office. Nicole Bradshaw with Emergency Medical Services. <coughs> Vanessa Corbin with the Health Department. Hazel Coriano with Social Services. James Heath with Animal Control. Carolyn Hill with the Library. Shamika Howell with the Health Department. Jeremy Lancaster with Solid Waste. <laughs> Keith Lofton with the Sheriff's Office. Ryan Mitchell with the Sheriff's Office. Darren Phillips with Social Services. Anna Snyder with the Library. And that's all the one years, Mr. Wood. Our five-year employees are as follows. Angela Garner with ser uh, Services on Aging. Howard Kostalecki with Solid Waste. Veronica Simmons with Social Services. Trevor Williams with Emergency Medical Services. Natasha Francois with the library. Sylvia Daniels with social services. Miles Potter with emergency medical services. That would be all for five year employees. <laughs> Next, we have our 10 year employees Rhonda Carter with Facility Services. Richard Lewis with the Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Next, we have our 20 year employees Miriam Hatch Torres with the Health Department. And Larry Hardy with the Detention Center. And please join with me in giving everyone a hand for their years of service.
Thank you. Okay, the, the next item uh, on our agenda is a public comment. Um, at this time, we'll open up the floor for any uh, public comments from anyone. Just leave right there. Be fine. Uh, Tom Drew, P.O. Box 587, Goldsboro, North Carolina, 27533. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I think a few of you don't realize Halloween's over, but uh, welcome to the first of November. Uh, the North Carolina Election and Related Laws and Rules book is, looks to be a bit thicker than my Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. That situation need to back up, but fortunately inside the printing is a whole lot bigger, so maybe it's half as thick. Uh, first, a question for Representative Bell. Re regress the question to Commissioner Bell. In your position as liaison to the Board of Elections, as asked before, do you welcome open discussion of what constitutes that position? You can answer later. Uh, we'll address another liaison at the end in the last minute. Huey, Louie, and Dewey beats Truman and Dewey. Or Huey and Louie beat Truman and Dewey. Uh, that's where the media dropped the ball that particular election. And uh, researching now, they were talking this morning like only half of the potential voters were going to even vote. If you got candidate A and B for one position and C and D for the other, and uh, C and D, one gets 49, the other one gets 51% of the votes, but candidate A and B, only one gets maybe 1 or 2%, and the other one gets a half a percent. That means all the people that were there that could vote decided none of the above. Fourteen years of researching the uh, dysfunctional electoral due process that has replaced uh, the lesser two angels, has been re replaced with the lesser of two evils. Now we have a pig and a poke, and that ain't no joke. And the reason the elections are contested now in 2016 for the 14th year, begun in 2002 on November 1st of 2002, prior to the elections, that should have superseded that action to the Bedore Pate runoff. It was ignored till uh, March 6th of 03, which the then Board of Chairman of the board, of the chairman of the board of elections and board did agree in principle of my concerns. Though did not think that they had the authority, but this book does give them the authority, which a later board said that weren't within their purview. That's where you need a dictionary to see what that means. Lies on again. There was another lies on was in Wayne County, city of Goldsboro. Should put Goldsboro on the map for the right reasons. Several years back at the Goldsboro Police Department, there was a brochure about a liaison program. Should the citizens have difficulties with the police department, this person designated as the liaison would intercede, hopefully be that independent third party that seems to be lacking in so many other cities, counties, and states in a community and peace officer relations, a viable option that they keep seeking. It had existed. I did contact the then liaison as recognized the director of public affairs and did she recognize that the liaison could be also interpreted as an ombudsman. She did agree. That position has be, been decommissioned, thus is now defunct. Look that up in your funkin' wagon. Thank you. Is there any uh, one else that would have uh, any comments before the board? Ask all. Okay. 
Okay, public comment section is closed. Um, we are now going into a, uh, a public hearing to receive public comments on the proposed minimum housing standards for Wayne County. Uh, Mr. Crumple. Yes, sir. <clears throat> At a previous work session, uh, we uh, had uh, proposed some minimum housing standards ordinance for Wayne County. Previously, the county addressed manufactured housing separately from site-built type dwellings. Uh, this ordinance combines the two. It doesn't single out manufactured housing. It combines those two uh, for consideration. Um, <coughs> minimum standards for site-built dwellings include structural condition, plumbing, heating, electrical ventilation, standards for space, control of insects, rodents, and infestations. It also rolls into it manufactured housing, the HUD requirements for the county, exterior condition, doors, windows, and underpinning requirements, structural condition, electrical, heating, and plumbing. It also details out the responsibilities of the owners and residents and the county's responsibilities. Uh, this ordinance has been reviewed by our legal staff and uh, has been uh, reviewed uh, and approved. Uh, like I say, we held a work session at the previous meeting. You scheduled a public hearing and uh, we're ready to set public comments. Okay. Okay, is there anyone that would like to step forward and uh, speak on the topic of our uh, minimum housing standards here in Wayne County? Just a question, Shirley Edwards, 1766 Tommage Road, 27534, property owner in the county, resident of the county. Just a simple question, where can we get a copy of this once it's done? Mr. Crump. Oh, it'll be made available on the county's website. It's the uh, proposal was made available. Um, you know, the legal notice contained the local address for this ordinance. And if, if, if it's adopted, it will be put on there and not permanent. And that's good, but we do have a lot of people that are not on the web. And so if paper copies can be available for some of those citizens that would like that. And they would be available at the planning office? Uh, we would have some copies at the planning office, but also be available in the county manager's office. Right. That's okay. all. I think it's an excellent idea. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would have any public comment? No, we're closing our public hearing. Um, and appointment committee is our next topic. Yes, Mr. Chairman, appointment committee met this morning. We have one appointment. I'd like to recommend the appointment of Andrew Al Sutherland to the Wayne County Veterans Service Advisory Board, representing District 2. Uh, this is the form of the motion. Okay, we have a uh, motion on the floor. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Yeah, none. All those in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Okay, we that is it. And that is all we had on the appointment. That's all. Okay. Um, would we like to take action? I'm sorry, I did move too quickly there. Uh, action may be taken on the uh, minimum, proposed minimum housing standards. Uh, do we have a motion for us to take action on that? Mr. Chairman, motion to um, adopt the ordinance that has been proposed and, and discussed by this board. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, are we moving on this too quick? Uh, I know we've had a work session on it and had to put it here in the day. And I'm just wondering if we need to wait till the next meeting before we act on this. It's a pleasure to the board. Well, uh, just for discussion as such, I, th I think this has been reviewed for the last number of months. It has been uh, uh, reviewed by uh, legal, has been reviewed by uh, our planner. Um, there have been, uh, my understanding this morning, you had stated that uh, this was posted online. There was no public comments on that. Is that correct, Mr. Crump? Yeah, legal notice was posted twice what we are required to, um, to have access to it online. And I received no comments either through email or telephone. Uh, but that's 
Yeah. That feedback. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. I just have one question, Mr. Crumble. Uh, this says minimum housing. How far out? How far out in the yard does this take? It only deals with the structure. All of the structure itself. Right. Uh, then this is a question. Uh, do we have anything in place that takes care of the yard? Not currently. That's another topic for another day. Uh, uh, well, specifically, what in the yard are you talking about? There are, there are instances in, in, in my district where the house is in bad shape, but it has spilled over into the yard. Uh, tree growth, uh, unkept scrubbery in uh, several locations that are more hazardous than the house itself. And I'm looking specifically at the control of insects, rodents, and infestation. If, if it is a uh, health hazard, there is something in the health department, health director uh, can go in and ultimately get an injunction. Okay. And clean that up. All right. Uh, that's a health department. Uh, okay. All right. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Yeah, none. Uh, we're going to call a vote on the on the motion to adopt. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to adopt, signify by raising your right hand. Oh, that was unanimous. Is that correct? Uh, under unfinished business, uh, we have a um, presentation this morning, uh, and I'm going to ask our superintendent to come in and introduce our special guest. <coughs> Or maybe you're a special guest too. No, you're always a special guest. We're <laughs> glad to see you. I, I, I prefer to stay behind the scenes. But, uh, thank you for having us and uh, thank you for all you are doing. Um, with us today are the members of the Pinnacle Architecture Firm who we have hired to start the project at uh, Meadow Lane Elementary. Uh, Randy Baker's here with us today as well as uh, Mr. Jim Watson. Uh, are going to go over, show you some pictures of the building, the timeline, and what we're looking at to get moving on this project so we can start the other projects that follow in right behind this. So I'll introduce Mr. Baker and let him uh, go over the new elementary. Members of the board, my name is Randy Baker, and it is a privilege to be here today to present the um, new Middle Lane Elementary School. I have with me Dr. Jim Watson. If he would come up while I get the uh, pictures up on the screen. Chairman Dr. Uh, Commissioner Jim Ed Woods, it's a privilege and we're, we're excited about this project. I know uh, anytime you see the sun shining in Wayne County here lately, it's a good day. Uh, we, we certainly had our thoughts and prayers with you as y'all through the struggle and the challenges and knowing the resident folks that you have here uh, think better better days lie ahead but uh, what we'd like to do is real quickly is to uh, is this live yes I think so uh, this is a rendering of the uh, what the school might look like it's conceptual design at this point we're still working with staff and uh, Dr. Doug Moore uh, concerning the final uh, uh, stages but as you can see, it has a pitched roof. I think that's an important thing to emphasize. Mm -hmm. No flat roofs. <laughs> and uh, this building, this shows the main uh, student entrance. This would be the uh, parent drive-in. You see a covered walkway that would uh, provide uh, cover on on, uh, on rainy days or, or uh, uh, the main entrance to the school here. The uh, We'll show you later on the floor plan where the bus entrance would be. But this is approximately 115,000 square feet. Uh, it, it has a core facility for 900 students. And it is uh, built to be expanded. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the floor plan real quick. As you can see here, um, if you can imagine that rendering, this is that entrance, that tall structure here. This is the covered walkway. Again, the car drop-off would be here. Uh, this green area is the cafeteria. Blue area is the gymnasium. Here's another covered area here. This would be a bus entrance here so that the students, when they are 
delivered by the buses in the morning. They would either come in for the breakfast program that you have in the cafeteria, central collection in the uh, gymnasium before they're dispersed to the classrooms. And uh, it's basically a, sort of an E configuration. This is a central spine that runs down the entire facility. This is the office area, principal's office, sister principal, clerical staff, uh, the school health room there, the <coughs> conference room, also the guidance area. Teacher centralized uh, workroom with mailboxes would be there. And then uh, as we go down the hallways, and these hallways could be changed. This is something we're working with the uh, uh, school staff exactly uh, the way they would like that done. This is a, K, a pre K, K1 hallway. This is uh, 2 3, and this is 4 5. On the pre K K1 by Department of Public Instructions, uh, recommendations that the, the rooms are larger uh, those, those little kids need lots of movement within the room there's also an individual bathroom in each room uh, that that uh, allows the student to those who need to use the bathroom not to have to go out in the hallway but yet there is a group toilet on each hallway as students go to the cafeteria or go outside to play uh, obviously that's convenient for them there's also a teacher work room in each uh, hallway uh, that provides uh, it's, it's not just a, a workroom it's a collaboration area it's a place where grade levels could meet it's a place they could have uh, parent conferences if they chose to there would be school supplies based in that so you'd have that on each hallway and again the way these wings are done they will be a, 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 a grading will be done that if there was future expansion uh, you could add uh, uh, two to four classrooms down each wing over here, this is a uh, component that uh, there's uh, that the school officials wanted to do to, for some centralized services for exceptional children's program. Uh, Dr. Dunsmore, the students are currently housed where? That would be the edge with the new edge with building wing. So if you if you notice on that, it is a separate standing structure. I know there are some questions on that. There will also be an area that uh, we're adding on that. Um, a larger area for lunches because of the immobility of some of the students um, they'll have a lunch area though but that will be a separate um, part that it is attached to the building so um, those students will also have that and if you notice those classrooms are larger there's toilets in each one of those as well as some separate private areas because of the health needs of those students also it would be a separate entrance there for uh, the um, handicapped buses this is occupational and physical therapy up here. Um, one mention about the gym and cafeteria, this is a dividable partition that this whole area could be opened up. The uh, yellow here is the media center. You see it's fairly centralized location. These are some of the special classrooms. This is computer classroom, uh, uh, music, uh, art. Uh, this is a STEM classroom that they'd like to have. A uh, little purple area here is something that's a little bit unique. It's a central, a lot of times storage is never enough. So that's a central central storage facility. It's, it's built here where it could get, uh, you know, paper delivered, different things like that, and be housed there before it's distributed out in the schools. Playgrounds would obviously be on the exterior as the hallways uh, empty out. And we're still working on the site plan and the orientation of how it would uh, interact with uh, Meadow Lane and work with school officials about all the best ways to... Uh, and obviously with DOT in terms of sight lines and acceleration lanes, et cetera. But that's a real quick uh, overview of the floor plan, and we'd be happy to uh, ask you, answer any questions if you have any. Dr. Watson, one thing. In today's society, and we hate to think about it, but this school is um, secured. It is all enclosed. Once the students, teachers are in the building, they will be uh, in the building. They do not have to leave the school to go outside other than go to the playgrounds. Um, the entire building is connected. Um, once school is taken in, the entrance has a secure entrance vestibule that the uh, vestibule doors will be locked and you will have to buzz into the office area for um, parents or anyone else to get into the school. Um, we've done this in other school districts. It is a, um, a safe zone for the kids. 
so uh, and for the uh, for the teachers. Also, uh, Dr. Watson in in mentioned it. The EC um, the reason that wing is on one side. Our objective is to have Meadow Lane, the existing school, intact and um, functional as we are building the first phase of this project. Um, we will have to demolish just a portion of some of the classrooms. Uh, it will be in the bid that the contractor will set up mobile units for those uh, classrooms. And then after the first phase is done, which are the three large wings up there, the administration and the uh, cafeteria uh, gymnasium. Then once that is built, the other, the existing metal, metal lane will be torn down and uh, then the EC classroom will be built. With that, uh, the EC classroom we will have a covered entrance for those students to be in uh, uh, With that said, any questions on the floor plan? I know this is pretty quickly, but uh, if not, uh, just a brief uh, overview on timeline. Uh, our trailers, we would like to have this school up and running by 18, 19 school year. Our plans is to have this school out um, for bids sometime in the spring, and um, that way we can, grading will be ready to go. Hopefully, the rainy weather will be gone by that time, and uh, we will raise the building up. If you guys have been at that location, uh, that uh, site is a little bit low. We will raise the building up probably three feet or so to get it out of the uh, low light area. So, other than that? A couple of comments, if I could. Um, it's my understanding you have this particular school has been built twice? That is correct. So correct. It's been built uh, once in Guilford County. It's being built now in Onslow County. And uh, there are two more school systems looking at the same plant. So. The one in Guilford County is up and running? That is correct. That is correct. And I uh, assume that any flaws that there may be, we've already found. <laughs> Absolutely. That's one good thing about a prototypical uh, floor plan school. Um, once a building is built, if you build a house or any building, once you live in it, once the people are there milling around, you find, I mean, if I was perfect, I wouldn't be standing here. But you find things that you can always better uh, build. <coughs> and that is what we take into consideration. We go back and ask the principals, teachers, and that actually students what would be better in that silver and it helps the next project Absolutely. good any questions or comments i mean how many total classrooms are we looking at mm. i'm sorry i'm sorry uh you know right now there is not we do not have a definite number the core design will be for 900 students all right when the school opens that's we're looking at about 800 or so students at this um, facility with the uh, area to expand okay commissioner Petty. you have to forgive me I, my memory is not as good as it was and i was in those meetings right. but the hvac and all that that's in is it in the ceiling or we can get to it or that you is would correct. describe yes. that for those who weren't right part of that that's group. one thing that we're meeting with the maintenance department now there there's self-contained uh hvac units that are easily worked on. Um, you will not have a specialized system that you have to call somewhere else to work on this. It's very user friendly. That's what I was yes, recalling. Sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Acock, excluding the EC wing, there's approximately 40 <laughs> teaching stations. Okay. Approximately. And we still be a fine tuning <laughs> staff. Okay. And I remember. <laughs> Slow <laughs> Commissioner, uh, Commissioner uh, Mayo, I just I just want to know uh, how much of this is going to be uh, solar solar power, or are we looking at that at all? Solar power at this school mm -hmm. that has not been mentioned at this. Uh, it's a standard electrical you know uh, project. 
we are just starting the process with the school system to see exactly where, you know, what type of uh, uh, energy or uh, reusable energy that they would use. But, uh, at this point, at the uh, school in Guilford County, they did not opt to use that. Um, solar en energy is good. Um, things are changing with the buybacks that you're looking at now with the energy companies, and that is an ongoing study. I have a follow up. Go ahead. I have one other question. This may be for Dr. Dunsmore, but my understanding, my understanding is, is that the determination has been made that it's, it will be more cost effective to build a new school than to even look at refurbishing the old one. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I knew that we had talked, you and I had talked about that, and so I'm good with that. Okay. okay one of the things that Mr. Baker had said, and, and we could have brought the thumb drive, even in a, a normal rainstorm, the, and most of you have toured that building, the exterior hallways that we use are underwater. Mm -hmm. uh, we have pictures, we have to use wagons with our teaching staff and boots to pull the children through the water to get to classes. So yeah, it would have taken a considerable undertaking to refurbish that building. Well, I guess it just goes to show uh, how we can be, uh, when we toured, the building itself looked pretty decent, the actual building and construction. But there's other factors involved there, and you just brought it up. You know, if you got water, if it's built too low, uh, that's obviously a, a, a major reason to do something to get it out of the floodplain. So, okay, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, any other questions or comments? Uh, Commissioner Lamar? Well, when, uh, when the, the tour was taking place, the concern was about safety. And my question is, did, uh, is there any fencing? In the plans on the for that site, from the school, that we have not discussed with the school system. Well, typically there is. <coughs> well, when you that, and typically and not discussed suggests that there's not a plan for it right now. And I thought that was one of the major concerns was the safety of that site, and uh, which was one of the reasons that I thought that you know the site either need to be drastically refinished or a new site. And as I looked at that. Uh, unless I'm not familiar enough with the site, anyone could drive right up to either one of those wings if there's not a fence or some safety that I thought the military was real interested in. The, the back of those E's is where those new recreational fields are going with the city of Goldsboro, and we're working, there will be a fence around it. Our, our problem is once they get those fields, they're going to be in before the building is, and then we will fence in around that, yes sir. And along the front of it, I'm just curious. Along the front, right now, we don't have any plans to put, <coughs> excuse me, fencing in that because it will face Ash Street back and there will be an S driveway coming into it. Okay. And what was the timeline that you said that the building would be completed? In the year 18, uh, school year 18, 19. This is sort of a connect the dots question, uh, Dr. Dunsmore. Uh, when you made your, when you, major introduction I, I, there was a, a line in there somewhere that you get this one moving so the other ones would come the other ones that I assume that you were talking about in that first five year plan would come in yes. behind it and so if we're talking about 1819 with this what timeline are we talking about Southern Wayne and the other well we want to get as soon as we break ground on this one we're starting on the Southern Wayne project now that's obviously not near as large of a project as this so I would hope that would take far shorter time frames. Well, that 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 is a is a key component and answer to the question that is obviously obvious south of the Noose River as to when Southern Wayne is going to begin because the suggestion that it comes behind would give someone the impression that it might not start earlier than 19 or 20. And oh no, no. So, okay. you know, we, that, if, as if you recall, um, Mr. Camardi, when uh, Mr. Wood and we did the financing and the funding on that, it's all predicated. It's coming it, as soon as we break ground. In fact, Mr. Baker and I spoke yesterday. We're getting them the, the mapping and the information for the Southern Wayne High School to start looking at that. So you, are this the same architectural firm that's going to be handling Southern Wayne? Or? He's looking at those. As you know, there's already been drawings done. 
Well, I, I know that part of it. I just know that probably nothing is ever completed until complete. And I, I know what we delivered to you. I didn't know how much would have to be altered or changed or improved upon. Well, I, I think that probably satisfies the concern south of the news room. <laughs> yeah, actually, our goal is, is, is looking around the same time frame to be getting that over. Well, I'm not surprised that question came up. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> well, and, and part of that is, Commissioner, is that project won't impact any of the schools. We can build that completely separate of the operation of the schools. Thank you, sir. So. And, and that, will be that will be true also in additional classrooms up north. So, right? We're going to get but, but I wanted to follow up uh, on, okay. on uh, uh, Ed, Ed's uh, subject here. Uh, the day we did the tour, and I want to follow up on, on Commissioner Camardi's comment, uh, there, Colonel Slocum was very animate about security mm -hmm. of the existing metal lane. And it looks like to me, unless I'm missing something here, the security is not going to be, at this point, any more secure than the existing building the way it looks out now. It, it, and I would suggest that with, with society and things that are happening in general, there will come a time when we're going to have to do something about making our schools 100% secure. And, my, and I'm just suggesting this may be the time to do it. But rather than leaving the front of the school open mm -hmm. where people can walk in uh, arbitrarily, uh, we may want to address that. That's just a suggestion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Any other comments or questions? Thank you so much for your presentation and Godspeed. And let's let's break ground. Let's Thank get going. <laughs> Thank you, John. Have a great day. Okay. Uh, our next item is an update uh, from uh, Planning Director Mr. Crumpler um, on our internet broadband, broadband survey. Okay, just a little update on this uh, project that we've been working on here. Um, we, of course, have been working with the North Carolina Broadband Infrastructure Office. We gathered and had an um, online survey. We received over 650 responses to that survey. We've developed all types of maps for the uh, broadband office with the state. And they're ready to host their meeting here for providers, internet service providers. They are coming in here. That meeting is tomorrow <coughs> at 3 o'clock at 134 North John Street on the third floor. It's not typically a public meeting. Uh, but uh, we, those internet service providers have been pre, uh, sent an invitation and uh, we'll see what kind of uh, response we do get. Uh, and at the same time, I have developed a request for proposal for wireless uh, uh, network service or we will be posting that out uh, t on the internet on our website and we'll be receiving requests for that type of service if uh, we don't get any satisfaction out of this meeting. So that's just a status of the meeting. It was put back a little bit due to the storm a couple of weeks, and uh, but I wanted to make sure you were aware that that meeting was Okay, I've got two questions. Yes. Two questions. Mr. Gross, how long do you anticipate this meeting last? Probably 30 minutes, maybe. Reason I ask, I got a, a prior commitment I can't attend. I, I like to, but is it possible you think we can get um, Wayne to record it for viewing? Yeah, I'd appreciate it if you could. Okay. We'll see if we can arrange that. Okay. Thank you. All right, Commissioner. How many, how many invitations do we send out to providers? I'm not sure. Mr. Collier with the state sent he did that. out, so okay. they're responsible for making that contact. But I'm pretty sure, you know, everybody that is in this area that's an ISP is has been contacted and notified of the meeting. We decided to have it during the day instead of at night so that we could possibly attract more people <laughs> to come. They would be less likely to come to I mean, if they didn't come, they could still go to our That's website right. to the, where we got That's a proposal right. sitting out there and they could do it. Well, we haven't route. put it there yet, but we're going to. That's a okay. separate project. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, any further questions or comments? Thank you so much. 
Item three and four are really similar, uh, but at any rate, uh, the first one is a motion to adopt resolution declaring the official intent of the Board of Commissioners to reimburse expenditures by the county for Canterbury Village and North Creek Subdivision Street Project. Yeah. As we talked about before, we'll be uh, uh, going out for the issuance of the debt in January. So between now and then, we will have some expenses on the um, contract with the, I mean, with the engineer. And so what this does is it allows us to be reimbursed for that from the proceeds of the uh, bond uh, that we'll be issuing for this. Okay, so I need a motion uh, to adopt a resolution. Make the motion to accept the uh, item number three, the resolution declaring the official intent of the Board of Commissioners to reimburse expenditures by the county for the Canterbury Village and North Creek Subdivision Street Project. Okay, we've got a motion on the floor. Any discussion on the motion? And none. All those in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Item four is the motion to approve the design contract. Yeah, this is uh, where you authorized us to go to full design. Um, in looking at it, we realized we would not be able to get the work done before we went into the winter months. And during the winter months, asphalt plants shut down. Uh, and they don't do paving during that time because it doesn't meet the necessary um, testing and everything because of the cold weather. Uh, so our plan is, is to have this design go out for bids uh, late winter, early spring, and be ready to go probably sometime around March. Have we gotten some questions from Canterbury Village and, and uh, North Creek in regards to our timetable? Uh, I only saw one email. I hadn't had time to address it. That was from Steve Cole, so I'm going to email him back today. Great. Maybe he can post it on their yeah. uh, Facebook page right. or something because they may be expecting us to move a little faster, but right. uh, as I have learned, uh, you don't pave roads in the winter. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it might be that we want to make some, some uh, notation on that. Okay, we need a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the design contract with us, CP. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Not all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, that's approved. And the final item under unfinished business is a motion to accept the bid for previously declared surplus property. This is the lot 212 Tina Avenue in Pikeville that the town of Pikeville approached us about. Uh, we own it jointly because it was a tax foreclosure uh, acquisition and uh, they were wanting us to declare it surplus. We would both have to do that. They've done it, you've done it. Uh, and we agreed that we would put it on gov deals uh, because that's an electronic auction which meets state law. Uh, we did that and the um, Minimum bid we would accept was $25,000 on the house. Uh, the high bid ended up being $44,300. So we're recommending that you accept that bid of $44,300 uh, from Tin Thomas uh, out of Hampstead, North Carolina, and uh, award that subject to uh, the approval of the town of Pikeville as well. Okay. Uh do we have a motion to accept the bid? So moved. Okay, we have a motion to accept the bid. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Not. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay, bid is accepted. Under the consent agenda, we have uh, five items. Um, we have a motion to approve consent agenda. Motion to approve consent agenda. Okay, we've got a motion to approve. Um, any discussion on the motion? Not. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Under new business. Finally, Fred, we're, you're up. <laughs> uh, we have a presentation on the Veterans Ride <coughs> free promotion. Right, thank you. I uh, want to hand out a flyer to each of the board members. If that's great, okay. great, yes. Goodness in full color. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. We miss you at the board meetings. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. two colors. Okay, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
at our uh, GWTA board meeting on September 29th, the board of directors uh, uh, approved the promotion that we have to recognize the service that the veterans in in Wayne County, both active and retired veterans, have served the community and the country. So the uh, board of directors approved that during the week from November 7th to November 12th, that any active or retired military uh, may ride the city buses at no charge. All they need to do is show a military ID uh, card or a uh, DD-214, uh, which is their retirement or their uh, discharge papers with the photo ID. And uh, just want to take this opportunity so that we can get the, get the word out. We have posted it on our website and we have uh, put out material throughout the community with the veter different veterans organizations. Um, and we will be going to the uh, Goldsboro City Council meeting on, this, on uh, November 7th also. <coughs> mention it but I did want to share that with you and uh, uh, again it's to thank our active and vet and uh, retired veterans for the service that they have done to uh, for this country any questions any comments or questions uh, Commissioner I think it's a great idea and I'm going to be clear on one thing they don't necessarily have to be retired they could just have service correct right. they can okay. be active definitely they can active. be active but they you know, don't necessarily be a retiree to, to be able to ride no. you just any active have to serve that Active service. And, yeah, they don't have to be fully retired. They have to have served in the military yeah. and have had some. And you've got to stand at the veteran service office. I would trust. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much, and I want to thank the board for doing this for our veterans. Thank you. Great idea. Any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Cromartie. I, I would just like to give Fred a thumbs up for the creative things that I've noticed that he comes up with, uh, be it this or uh, some. I think moral <coughs> things, that, morale things that helps the employees, the drivers, the little things. I just, he doesn't come before us very much, but just this sort of a coverall, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your support. Commissioner May. Yeah, I, I, uh, I agree with Commissioner Marty. By the way, he and I both sat on the GWTA board and it's, mm. it's uh, it's a privilege to, to serve on this board, and I have to say thank you to the staff and also the county uh, over the years because about three years ago, uh, I, I was I was at the point that I was almost ready to make a motion to, to separate the county from uh, Wayne County Transportation, but through the board's help, previous board members, you coming on board and other staff members and of course our county manager and everybody concerned you when you see our latest finance report mm -hmm. you're going to be well well pleased at what you see so um, i just want to say uh thank you for and keep up the good work you, there's no way you're going to be ever retired now okay <laughs> well, thank you sir okay. i appreciate that thank you thank one you so thing, much one thing i did fail to mention we also for the first time that that i'm aware of we will have a vehicle in the veterans day parade next friday yeah right good yeah thank you okay any other questions or comments thank you so much thank you next item is uh from our sheriff go on mr sheriff <laughs> Good morning. Chairman, Commissioner, good morning. Um, I guess this is the time that we need to discuss uh, purchasing a van for transport as our new facility begins to open for our detention center. Uh, last year we had put the, a box truck in the budget to haul laundry back and forth because we are currently doing laundry at Cherry Hospital. We will be doing our own laundry once the new facility opens. And we had put a, a box truck in the budget. We decided to take that out at that time because the completion of the jail had not been formulated at that time. As we approach the time now to open the new detention facility, we were talking with um, Mr. Wood as well as our detention staff and decided we'd probably be more prudent if we had a transportation van rather than a box truck and put a hitch and pull a utility trailer for the laundry that way we could transport the laundry, detach the trailer, and then use the vehicle. So instead of spending 
$85,000 for two vehicles because one of our transport vans is near 100,000 miles with motor problems <coughs> just by a utility trailer and a transport van. So that is what we're proposing instead of buying two vehicles, buy one vehicle and a utility trailer. I follow that logic, saving money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. We need a motion to approve the purchase of the detention center van, inmate transport uplift, and a laundry trailer so uh, with the appropriate budget amount. So moved. All right. We've got a motion on the floor. Any discussion? One, one comment. It'd be worth mentioning when Cherry Hospital laundry service was down, Wayne Moore Hospital did our laundry at no charge. And we do appreciate yeah. that tremendously. Yeah. Very good partnership there. Absolutely. couple of years you'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments or questions? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say goodbye by raising your right hand. Thank you, sir. While we have the sheriff here, Sheriff, oh. I would just, uh, I wanted to wait until we got past it. Thank you for the many places I see folk picking up trash Absolutely. under you all's leadership. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I was, before I made this call, I was trying to think of where I saw some the other day. And it seemed like it was a new place. I, I can't remember right now, but it was somewhere that I had not noticed them before. But I thought to myself, man, that's an appropriate. So there's some creativity out there uh, on you all's part of helping to keep the streets in Wayne County looking good. Thank you, sir. And I will say for the public's uh, information, we will be given citations for trash uh, disposal if it's not in the proper place. <laughs> If I can follow up on that for you, Luke. What was the run in total for the years, like 25,000 bags? Uh, or currently, from what we've picked up so far, is 24,000 mm -hmm. some odd yeah, I bags I remember of trash. That 25, uh, it is a real problem in Wayne County, it, and it like is, I say, we uh, I've instructed our deputies if they see people throwing out trash on the highways, that we will be enforcing that general statute. Well, I appreciate that, because that's a shame that people do that in the first place. Yeah. Absolutely. That's true. Yes, it is. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Okay, we are uh, we deleted item three, item four. Uh, we're going to hear on uh, item four and five from our finance director. The sheriff, when he was presenting, there was also a budget amendment attached to that. So if and that motion yeah. did include the budget amendment, is that correct? Okay. And, oh, so you voted on it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I must have been asleep. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, what I'm going to present to you today first is the county's financial statements as of September 30th. And I believe you have your handouts. It's coming there. Isn't okay. It? We're slow. <laughs> okay. There are three different things I believe you have and one is an explanation of substantial items from September 30th financial statements financial report then you have a report that is actually the the figures themselves and then you should have a chart for sales tax Has everybody got all three of those okay so if you look at the actual financial report I'm presenting to you the first three months of our fiscal year for 16-17, so we are 25% through the year. And the first thing you'll probably notice is our cash from September of at this time last year to now is down. And um, the, the biggest contributing factor to that is because we have been making good progress on our capital projects. So um, if you'll notice on your financial report, page three, I have an update on your capital projects. It's the very last thing on that page. And I'll skip to that since we're talking about the cash. There's a section called Selected Capital Projects. And you'll notice under September 2015's column for the misdemeanor jail mostly, but also for um, the schools and then the Maxwell Center, that there is a big difference in the expenditures at September 2015 to September of 2016. 
And I wanted to show you that because that just that shows the progress that we're making on those projects, and that is also why our cash is down because we are spending those funds that we have allocated for those projects. Are there any questions about that? Oh, one question. Sure. The amount we've got in there, like the eighty-four million four six, that's what we have put over there for these capital projects. That's not actually all the total cash we have, right? No, that is, that's our total cash. That's our total cash for the county. That's all of our, the 84461000 mm -hmm. okay. that's total cash at September 2015. And then you see our total cash at September of 2016. Okay. Right. If, if I could, on those projects, if we get over here to September 16 on the amount of dollars that we actually have spent and how much is budgeted, then we're seeing that dollars are being left. Are those just folded back over into capital, or what, what happens to the... Well, these are not closed out yet. So for like the detention center, you see that that's 83% completed. We still have not paid out all the bills for that project. We will still have more coming in. Yeah, I was more or less looking at the, the school The schools. Projects. The schools will be will be different. Once, those, once we have um, talked with the schools and made sure those projects are completely um, closed out, then we will make sure that if it was if it was school sales tax money that it gets put back in that fund, if it was money that the county contributed that it gets put back into that fund. So we will be looking at that. And one last question on sure. that is, I think the way we uh, built the, the schools, we actually uh, did ask for a reimbursement on sales tax. That's, That's right. right, and we will also be making sure that we put that back in our capital reserve fund. It was $1.2 million, so okay. we just wanted to make sure before we did that that we have all of our bills paid out. Sure. And that's also the fund that I believe the sewer for Grantham, right. that there's some expenditure, expenditure yeah. still coming in for and that. And that will come out of there. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that's, that's basically a um, synopsis of your capital projects. If you look, go back to page one and look at your, um, well, look at your figure that it looks like your revenue, well, your revenues are significantly less than your expenditures at this point. It is still early in the year, and the biggest contributing factor to that is that we have not con uh, collected a big portion of our property taxes yet. And we have made some large ex expenditures with debt payments and um, transfers to capital projects so that's why that looks a little bit off right now so that'll even itself out as we collect more on our taxes now the section below that pulls out specific revenues like our property taxes and then our sales taxes um, the sales taxes I have given you a chart on that and there's a couple of things I, I, I did a chart I thought that would be easier to look at than just straight 12 months worth of data and because we had October sales tax in, I went ahead and included it in this chart. Everything else on your information is as of September 30, but this chart includes October. So this gives you a comparison from September of last year to October of this year, what our sales tax is, look, is looking like. And then parentheses, I've put the month that this represents the sales for. So for example, you'll see that the middle, the middle bar in that chart is really high. And that's because that actually represents December sales. So it's, four, it's really kind of four months behind when you look at this in the month that we collect. Now, I also want to point out that we did budget conservatively for sales taxes. So although October is down some, we are still on track for what we have budgeted. We are 25% through the year, and our collections, if you look at the first page of the financial report, are showing that we have actually collected on sales taxes about 25-26%. So as far as our budget goes, right now we're in good shape for sales taxes. Okay. Um, <coughs> on the comparison of tax receipts, why does June, any reason why June sticks out? Um, for... Do you mean the one that says that we collected in September, but it's actually for June sales? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, it actually is higher than the September of last year at this time. And so that's, I mean, I don't, other than just, you know, good oh, economy. Near, near that Christmas sale. Right. I haven't seen any, um, I looked yesterday, I have not seen any economic updates from like the NCACC yet on how the state's doing as a whole. 
So I'm hoping they'll send something out soon to kind of give us an indication of how the state is doing. We, we do know everybody's concerned about the opening of the bypass, and I believe that was in, um, when was that, June and July? Memorial Day weekend. May. It was late May. Right. So the two months you really want to look at is the last two and the first two because you can compare September, which is really for June, and then October, which is July. Our concern is now June actually went up, yeah, which is an oddity. Right. But then October is down about a hundred thousand dollars. So I think the next three months will be very um, crucial for us to try to get a trend on that. We don't really have enough right now for a trend, but we'll be able to over the next three months. So by the time we we uh, get back in here. Um, in uh, probably January or early February, then we'll have a pretty good beat on it about what where we're going. Commissioner Mayor, would, would that also be true for uh, any effect from the hurricane that we may experience? It? It's going to be four or five months out. Uh, it'll be about three months about out. Three months There's usually out. About, yeah. If you notice, like October for October, it's for July sales. So it's uh, August, September, and then we get it in October. Is, is there any kind of a feeling that, that you have about Well, I don't the know that they'll that necessarily be down because uh, they may be down for a few days, but then people have to come back and they also have to buy additional things they probably didn't plan on. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know enough about it to tell you if it'll spike up or down right. or if it'll stay the same. Um, for the amount of stuff that's out beside the street getting thrown away. Somebody's going to be selling a lot of stuff. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Gurley. Really. Carpet, furniture? I, there was, I, don't, I don't think there's any sales loss. It, you may not have bought from Food Line or, or Walmart in one part of the county, but they went to the other part of the county and made up for that yeah. need. So. Yeah. yeah, I look at this as really refreshing because there was a great deal of fear, and I was one of those that had that fear, and that is that sales would, in fact, go down dramatically. Yeah. Well, um, we'll, like I said, just looking at it here, it's, we're on target of what we budgeted we uh, and actually receiving $31,000 more uh, than the same time the previous year. Is that correct? Right. right. And, and again, once we have one more quarter under our belt, sure. we'll have about five months mm -hmm. since it actually opened because I'm not counting May. I'm counting June because I think it was Memorial Day, I believe you told me, somewhere yes, around there that we opened it. So it was right. late May. So I think that's good really news. June and July is the only ones we have right yeah. now. I think that's good news. Yep. Okay. Uh, the re the remaining information is basically just um, depart our individual departments, and um, if you unless you have some specific questions, um, I do want to point one out because there is a significant difference on EMS and EMS net in the expenditures last year versus this year. I'm sorry, the revenues. Last year at this time, we had received um, debt proceeds from the equipment loan and the radios that we purchased, and so that was included in revenues last year, which is why it looks like it's so much further down this year. So that's the difference there. <clears throat> and if there's any questions on any of these other departments, I'll be happy to answer them. Workers' comp and hospitalization seems to be tracking right now with what we budgeted, so we're, we're happy about that. The, let, me, uh, let me hear that again. I said they workers' comp and hospitalization right now are on track with what we budgeted, so we're happy about well, that. Well, that's, that's good. <laughs> it is good, but I just remind you that last year was the last quarter. <laughs> that, that killed us. So look out the last quarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, let me ask something. On the Maxwell Regional Ag and Convention Center, is that um, you're showing 183000 Is that the sales tax that we're getting from this no sir center. and i'm glad you brought that up because okay. she emailed me this morning what you're seeing for the maxwell center revenues that is donations that we have received so far okay. but the occupancy tax um we were supposed to receive in october and i have been emailing her back and forth about that and the number that she we've not received the check yet i think it's on its way but we are, we will receive sixty nine thousand three hundred and if I put that out or annualize that out, that's 277200 which is above what we budgeted for the year. Yeah. So that's a good sign. It is a very good sign. Uh, and just to refresh your memory, those payments started, if you remember, we 
had the notice to proceed June 30th. So the payment started in July, but the agreement says they pay us quarterly. So we're supposed to end the quarter in September, and they cut us a check in October. Who's they? The city. The city. This is the so two percent. So is the city delinquent in this November the first? No, I, I think it's probably more. They've been out. They've probably been sidetracked by the oh, hurricane okay, and been out right. and been out for a few days. So yeah. I have been in contact with her, and I think that we'll be getting that very shortly. <laughs> I do want to update you on one other issue, just because you've been getting an update um, in the past on it, and that is the Medicaid cost settlement for the health department. And basically where we are with that is the same place we were in April. We have not received any more monies for the cost settlement. However, uh, Ken Stern told me yesterday that they did receive um, a one-time hold harmless payment, and the amount was $230,689. And this was basically to help offset the burden to the counties that um, would be negatively impacted by the change in methodology that they are implementing for figuring our cost settlement. And I believe David has come in and spoke to you about that before. Um, they are still kind of working on that. And so this is our one-time payment for that. It's not really the Medicaid cost settlement money, but it's tied to it. So I wanted to give you an update there. And okay. I believe that's it unless you have any other questions on the county's financials. Any other questions? Okay, and then I think you're going to give us another update. I do. I have the Wayne County Tourism Development Authority, September 30th. <coughs> I've included, um, I've included uh, the balance, basically the balance sheet, and then um, what what we what you would call your income and loss statement, but. It's more simplified. We don't really have a year's worth of activity to be able to compare it to prior history yet. Um, cash in the bank at this point is $72,131. And if you look at what is titled the profit and loss budget versus actual, I need to point out that this is actually only two months worth of data, even though it, it says through September 30. Um, July, this would include July and August. Um, sales. We would not receive September's until October. So this actually is only two months and we're really ahead of budget on these revenues that we've collected so far. Not really a lot of expenditures yet. Our audit has pretty much wrapped up and that's going to be presented to the Tourism Board next week. And um, I'll be happy to give you, give any of you a copy of that or we can, we can have the presentation here if we need to. They'll be presenting that next week as well. And, ju and just to refresh everybody's memory, this is the one percent <coughs> tax that you adopt, and it goes to fund our Wayne County Tourism Development Authority. Um, so, just like the rest of them are doing so well, this one's also doing well because the hotels uh, are doing far better than we anticipated uh, when we did the initial agreement. Uh, there's been a lot of growth, and I think Bill serves on that committee with me. There's been a tremendous amount of growth over the last two years, really since we signed that agreement with the city, um, as far as the percentage growth in collections by the hotels. It's been going up just about every meeting. Mm -hmm. right. there. And, and so they also got online hotel booking now. That's right. That's right. We're getting those as well. That was something we weren't getting. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to point out, um, because there is in the agreement the the – Part that my, that the town of Mount Olive has, we have to reserve 70% um, of the one percent for them that they that we receive from the sleep in in Mount Olive, mm -hmm. and so that part on the balance sheet is designated under committed fund balance, and that's the amount that they have as of June 30. So we have to set that part aside until they start asking for for that money to be. Um, reimbursed to them we have to set that money aside so that it is not spent on the general activities of the tourism authority. Right. and if you remember then the way that works is the town of Mount Olive would make a request to this tourism authority to spend that money for tourism related activities in Mount Olive and that question has been going very well for them down there too mm-hmm mm-hmm any other questions on the tourism authority? 
Okay. Any other questions? All right. Okay, thank, thank you so you. much. All right, we're going to be having a work session, but right now we're going to take a, uh, a five-minute break, uh, come back for the county manager's comment, commissioner comments, and a work session. Uh, so we're going to go into resource for five minutes. Okay, we're back at the session, um, and we're now going to open up a work session on a special events orders. Mr. Crump. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, of course, back, uh, Board of Commissioners set a goal uh, to take a look at some of the ordinances that we currently have uh, in our ordinance manual. And uh, a working group was formed. Of course, some of the representatives from the commissioners were on that working group, the planning board, some county staff members, and some members of the public, uh, which have reviewed uh, a lot of our ordinances. This started back in January of this year. and. Uh, the ordinance that we've got before you today is one that they have recommended that we take a look at or that you take a look at and uh, uh, potentially adopt and it's uh, called the uh, special events ordinance and uh, what this is is basically an ordinance that addresses special events um, at locations where more than 500 people are assembled and these are places that may not have a um, safety and evacuation plan in place with the county already uh, per the North Carolina Building Code. Uh, when you build a structure like an event center that we are, are underway on, those things already have a plan filed with the uh, fire marshal's office, but uh, some of these places that are holding events do not. They're out in the open. They don't have to meet building code requirements, so there's no requirement to have that. This ordinance kind of addresses those issues. Uh, and it happens to be with a place that uh, uh, with 500 more people. So we'll look at it. It addresses when a permit is required, the process of applying for a permit, what agencies are reviewing this permit, uh, the conditions for obtaining it, uh, the requirements for events that routinely have more than 2,500 people are addressed specifically. Uh, there are some exemptions to the ordinance. Uh, there are standards under which the or uh, permit will be issued. <coughs> There's a time frame for review, a time frame for applying. Uh, there's also additional standards for any television or film crews that come here that may want to uh, do some filming, uh, any required fees, and then the ability uh, to revoke a permit. So we get into this ordinance, and um, the purpose of it is to establish a, a structured process for permitting the staging of special planned public events and our television and film activities to ensure the proper planning and adequate allocation of county resources for events and to protect the health and safety of the public attending such events. Um, and what we're talking about here is police protection, fire service, EMS, uh, the closure of roads, notification of DOT, any of these types of uh, uh, requirements so that our county is well prepared to be uh, to address those issues uh, before the event occurs instead of after an event occurs or during an event. Of course, some exemptions. Uh, the chapter, uh, this ordinance will not apply to events sponsored by local, state, or federal government agencies or schools located within Wayne County as the uh, planning for that type of uh, event and allocation of resources has already been planned for and coordinated. Uh, it shall not uh, apply to regular church services or worship activities or events. This chapter does not apply to businesses holding events and venues that are designed or designated to hold large numbers of people uh, where they have already got an emergency plan in place as required by the North Carolina Building Code. Um, of course, it goes through some definitions of what a covered event is and what a special event is. It's basically any event that's over 500 persons. Has some details there. And under 4703 on page 154 of your agenda package, we're looking at the when a permit is required. Uh, basically, no person shall be a, have a covered event without having first applied for and received a permit from the county unless it's accepted for. 
Uh, all applications must be made to the planning department. The application must be submitted for the event proposed and, uh, and no application shall be considered submitted until all the information required on the application form has been provided. They shall be submitted no less than 30 business days for review prior to the uh, event. Uh, the county manager or his designee shall have the authority to waive that 30 day or reduce that 30 day time period for, for just calls. Uh, once the planning department receives an application uh, for an event, uh, this will be forwarded to the Office of Emergency Services for their review. Uh, they may include the following, the Sheriff's Office, EMS, Fire Marshal, Emergency Management, the Fire Departments where the event may be held, uh, any Health Department or Environmental Health uh, Agency, the 911 Communication Center, and our, of course our Office Planning and Inspections in case there's any issues with those two departments. Also additionally, uh, we may be notifying the North Carolina Department of Transportation if there's any road closures or in the North Carolina Highway Patrol, if they're involved, or and or Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Uh, the county may set some conditions for permit approval. Uh, it may be required to pay for fire and medical standby and security law enforcement in order for a permit to approve, be approved. The applicant may be required to pay additional fees if the county facilities or services are being used. Of course, that would be uh, adopted separately in a, uh, as a budget amendment for revenue. Uh, those prices or those costs have not been determined. The Office of Emergency Services would be required to provide that for us. I do not have it as part of this uh, presentation for you. Of course, all covered events meet the North Carolina Building Code, ADA requirements. And item G on 150, uh, Five, it says uh, any event that routinely has more than 2,500 persons in attendance must have a permanent permit issued for general operating conditions as well as an emergency operations plan filed with OES. Um, any additional event that increases the attendance more than double that amount, uh, they would have to reapply for the permit to make sure that we're covering for the number of people that are attending. Of course, some exemptions, any local, state, federal government, schools, churches, businesses that are holding events in designated facilities with a plan that already in place. Um, when it's determined that an event um, does not meet the threshold of requiring a permit, but the notification of, EM, uh, of emergency first responders is recommended, we will forward the information to OES. Um, 4705 on page 156 gets into the standards for all covered events. Uh, of course, a covered event uh, time and location coincides. Uh, a covered event shall be approved upon the completion of the application required unless the application review finds one or more of the following. And it talks about the uh, time and location coinciding with another event for which a permit has been issued and determine if there's a safety issue or a logistical concern with allowing two events to proceed simultaneously. Uh, if the covered event will interrupt the safe movement or pedestrian or vehicular traffic uh, or at or contiguous to its location in a manner that cannot be adequately controlled by public safety departments. If the event will constitute a hazard to public safety or interfere with the endanger of the public peace or rights of residents to the quiet enjoyment of their property. Uh, the concentration of persons, animals, and vehicles at assembly points for at the location of the covered event will interfere with any county's ability to provide adequate fire, law enforcement, and emergency medical services to the public. And if the Office of Emergency Services determines that the event plan does not account for and protect the public health and safety needs of the citizens of the Wayne County. Of course, these are the standards for which a permit may be approved or disapproved. All covered events must comply with and pr provide proof of compliance with federal, state, and local sanctioning authority mandated medical coverage requirements, the Wayne County EMS medical standards for special events. The Wayne County EMS shall be the primary service provider. Uh, if additional emergency medical service t uh, personnel are provided by the applicant, they will only be permitted to function under authority of Wayne County EMS. 
Of course, all state, federal, and local fire safety and prevention standards, codes, and permitting requirements must be met. Of course, the fire department in the district where the event to be held shall be the primary, and all others must function under the authority of that respective department. Of course, it goes through, it continues on, talks about uh, animals, uh, alcohol, uh, the event organizer shall remove trash and debris, uh, may require the applicant to provide liability and our special events insurance coverages for the covered event. At its discretion, the county could require that. Uh, it also talks about where it, events of more than 500 people having crowd control manager in place, a ratio of one per 250 people, that is per the North Carolina Fire Code. Um, all road closures or events will impact traffic must be approved by the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Uh, it, a completed application shall uh, include the following, and it tells, gives you the details of what the application should include. Um, of course, it talks about the security and the law enforcement, the fire and rescue, the emergency, emergency medical services standby, the waste cleanup, and any other health or public works issues. 4706 on 158 deals with additional standards for television and film events. A pre-production meeting with the uh, OES office or its designee must be held. Talks about liability insurance requirements uh, for filming, uh, security deposit, um, and it gives some details and specifics about any film act filming activities that may be planned here. Uh, we have had cases in the past where several times some filming has taken place for different shows. Uh, this is a common occurrence in other parts of the country that they get, get local approval before filming uh, is uh, done. So we always are contacted by these agencies requesting that information. And of course, we tell them currently we don't have anything in file. But uh, if this ordinance was adopted, uh, this would uh, be the method that they would go by and what they would have to re be required to produce for us. Um, of course, the county manager on 158 at the bottom can uh, revoke any of the permits uh, or his designee or the planning director can he re revoke a special event permit if the permit holder fails to comply with the provisions uh, that, that the permit was issued under. There is an appeals process. There are some penalties in place on 159, um, and that pretty much details it for you. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Of course, this, this deals specifically with the, you know, events that are not planned for under the North Carolina Building Code where more than 500 persons are in attendance with respect to fire, EMS, police, and road closures uh, or, or how those things are handled. Uh, currently, uh, there are, if an event is held and it's not in a, uh, a place that has an emergency and safety plan in place, we, we're not made aware of it. I think, first of all, I, I think that we would need some guidance or some reasoning in regards to, one, the need for such an ordinance. Uh, and secondly, uh, is it customary for an ordinance of this type to be in place on the county level? Yeah. Uh, to answer Wood. your last question first, the answer is yes, it is customary to have it. The, the primary need for it is, is that if you don't have something like this, somebody can hold a large event which requires a large number of uh, sheriff's deputies to handle traffic control. Uh, they can put a real burden on your EMS system uh, and those are the two primary things. And then the 911 system, because you're getting a lot of calls about the traffic backups, uh, you're getting a lot of calls for EMS. And so what happens is you're caught totally off guard. We don't have time to plan for it and, for instance, bring in uh, extra deputies to bring in extra EMS personnel to handle that. So that's the reason for it. I, 
I, I had a think the same thing in regards to the fire departments because they would not have any correct unless you had a permit. That's right. Such. Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was in Lincoln County, we had Lake Norman. Uh, we had a group come in and put on a boat show there. Didn't call us. Didn't give us any warning. Uh, we had over a thousand people show up. We had a parking problem, uh, and then they had several accidents and things like that. So we were just caught totally. Uh, off guard with it. We didn't have any advance notice uh, that this was going to take place until we started seeing some advertisements go up. And that was, you know, like a week in advance, something like that. So that's the problem with it. If you don't have this, uh, then they can put a real burden on you. And the other thing is then they don't pay you for it because you don't have a provision in there that they've got to pay for those additional services. Okay. Questions? Also, traffic congestion from some of these events uh, is unplanned for, and additional personnel with the North Carolina Highway Patrol or the North Carolina Department of Transportation are not notified that this event is going to be held or taken into account for until the event is held. So this ordinance would provide a avenue to make sure those agencies were notified in a timely manner. And going through that, the only question I had was the events with 500 or more persons. Is that a realistic number? Is that too low? Uh, where do we come up with the 500? The 500 number was the, the committee, you know, discussed several different numbers and uh, came to the conclusion that 500 seemed to be the logical amount to, to plan for. It could, you could set that number higher. Uh, I don't think it would uh, affect the ordinance terribly much, but uh, we originally had discussed having it at 100 and then 750, and then it was lowered to 500. So that was kind of the compromise. Yes. So with the language about ones already with a with a evacuation plan, it would not be applicable to them. No. And then there are other exceptions, churches, schools, etc. Correct. Give me an example, one or two, if you will, that this would apply to. Give you an example. Um, you could have an event, uh, for example, uh, Busco Beach could have a special event that could attract a large number of persons that has not been properly planned for. Uh, event like that, a concert that could be an outdoor concert that's not being held inside a facility uh, to, that's planned and ac to accommodate a certain number of people that's being held in an open field uh, that doesn't have to meet any building requirements as far as the field is concerned. Uh, those are things where a safety plan is not in place with the county where this would address a concert. Um, draw that may cause traffic congestion, would require some crowd control managers, would allow us to be notified that additional EMS and police uh, services are requested. Well, I got one. A Trump event. <laughs> <laughs> he said got down 500 people. <laughs> so, but it, so it wouldn't be applicable to like a carnival or or the fair or something like that, correct? Fair has a plan in right. place with the county right. because it's a designated spot, so they do have a plan in place. Uh, the, the agricultural center, to meet the NC building requirements, they would have to have a plan in place with OES already. But it wouldn't require a permit every time a no, function happened. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to get to. Yes, that's a permanent uh, safety plan. In and place. this would be for the unincorporated areas of the county only. That is correct. Would that include or exclude the ETJ? That would include the ETJ. Include? Okay. Include. Okay. Yes, sir. So, for example, if you had a retail store with a large parking lot to put on a festival, that would require a permit. It would require them to apply. You may not require to have any additional EMS personnel there, but it would give OES the opportunity to review their application. So, and then before we, as we get 
towards adopt and if we choose to adopt this the permit schedule and the fee schedule will be in place before we adopt this it, you would adopt it simultaneously okay yeah if, if you choose to do it yeah yeah but if you and I, I think on the, and situations like that are actually a lot easier to deal with because they're handling it in a in an area that has a lot of off street parking where you get into real problems is where people try to jam something into an area they really don't have adequate parking they don't have adequate ingress and egress and that sort of thing um, if it was a church function it's exempted for example last night you know there's probably several churches that were having halloween uh trick-or-treat type functions festivals uh they may have they may have had a number of people that would have applied that this would have applied to but because it was a church function it would have been exempted but for example a car when it comes to town and sets up in a retail parking lot that would be it would have to apply if it's in our jurisdiction that's right because that's not a normal right. activity there whereas the church they would they would typically have large gatherings so with that a in a scenario like that do they normally call you and ask is there a permit required not historically i've never had anybody call the only people we've ever had call were movie uh people that were filming commercials or some movie uh segments that have used wayne county for those purposes we have had those people call and re request that if we had a permit application they needed to have it so we could apply and get approval for it and we've never had it in place previously and not and there's it's happened multiple times um and i don't you know it's happened in the, this year it happens every year are there any other private nonprofits that could be considered to be exempt I'm not, I'm not aware of it but you know some of these i mean as, as we as we use the thing something may come up where you feel like it ought to be then we can we yeah. can amend it you know, for example you know like at a jet port you know the the gua has a event once or twice a year with a fly in or um static displays and stuff i would consider that as a sponsored event by the airport okay i mean that's the purpose of right. it is to advertise the airport and we're we're a part of that okay so i would to me i would be I, my feeling there would be that's exempt if you take in like with a carnival in a parking lot if they came in and applied for a permit it gives oes the ability to see well you know how large is this going event going to be how many people are we dealing with do you need what kind of security are you providing are you going to need emergency services on site and, and, and you may or may not want to charge for those additional services that's going to depend on the size of the event and the requirement on our resources i don't think you're going to have a large issue with those it's the larger events that spring up from time to time that are a real impact to traffic congestion and that is those are the events that affect public safety and those are the things we want to make sure that we get addressed before the event happens so that we can uh, make arrangements okay any other questions or comments? i got a comment uh, there's some good things in this a lot of things i don't agree with and when i ran for the position i'm in i think one of the things i told the citizens of wayne county less government involvement <coughs> it seems like every meeting here lately uh we put more and more restrictions on the citizens of wayne county and uh and also uh when this does come up i'm gonna have to abstain from it because as part owner of a sports complex i've got to abstain from it thank you so, Mr. Acock, did you have one in mind on you that you disagree? Because I would be interested to know. Maybe I'll. I, I just, I think we're, I just think we're handcuffing, and some of the stuff we're just handcuffing the citizens. Now there's some good in it. Now I'm not, I'm not saying there's not some good in it, but right. I just, uh, I'm just. And in what way well, are we handcuffing citizens? And just in some of the restrictions that's in this, I just. Uh, my two cents worth right, and that's kind of the reason i asked the question so we ought to be on the lookout or the listen out for citizens who may call them if you had an example that 
you know, the one. Because I'm sure there's probably somebody that will find fault with it. Well, I mean, the, the only thing that it's requiring a citizen that's going to hold an event to do is to apply and be reviewed uh, and possibly have to pay for any service, additional services that they may be using. I don't, it's not really enforcing any rules that's any different on anybody specifically. Um, on page 151, it said events with 500 or more persons. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that, that's the, that's the <coughs> threshold. Huh? That's the threshold. That's the threshold. Mm -hmm. I mean, average citizen out here is not going to have an event. This is two or three families getting together for a family reunion that they had met in a long time. But I was just trying to think of myself mm -hmm. what would I come in contact with or what citizens would I know that would have an event that was 500 or more. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't think of any, so that means it. It's really trying to prevent the county from being handcuffed with, with in, a, in the ability to provide police and fire protection to these events without prior pub, you know prior notice. Um, I mean that's the reality of it. Um, yes, sir. It's it's uh, and and you just answered my question, but I had, I had another question. How, how does these permits? Uh, what are they called? No, the application for the permit wouldn't cost, but if you had, if it was found that you were a large enough event that you had to provide additional uh, source uh, resources for fire and EMS protection, then the county could charge you for those. In other words, if you're going, if you're going to tie up a couple of deputy sheriffs out there for four or five hours handling traffic, then. We really need to know that. We bring them in extra. If you're going to require one or two ambulances on site, we need to know that. That's an extra charge because that shouldn't be something that the rest of the citizens should subsidize. And generally, you charge labor and equipment, like right. the vehicle cost as well. Right. And if they want a fire truck on scene, you know. And one, one of the problems we have had. Uh, with some of them is is that the parking is so haphazard that we can't we literally can't get emergency vehicles into it, and so that's that's part of the planning too is to make sure that if something does happen that we can get those pieces of equipment in there and, and get people the help they need. If I'm understanding it currently, if a person wanted to have an event here. I'm just going to say a concert. They could go out to a landowner, rent a piece of property, put it on. There is no requirement to actually get any permits or get any plan of action. And all of a sudden, you've got 15,000 people at a concert. I'm using a number uh, at that concert. Then the cost of security, the cost of EMS fire all of those costs are really borne by the citizens here because they're not paying anything for it um, and there is no pre-planning there's uh, and most likely when it comes down to security by providing those deputies you're probably going to be paying overtime so it's not just only the deputies but you probably have to take <coughs> off-duty deputies to provide that uh, this structures it in such a way that if you're going to have an event, there there are proper procedures to go through. So, Commissioner May, I'm I'm going to address uh, Commissioner Acock's concern for a second. I'm wondering if uh, we may be strapping our citizens to a certain degree for this reason. Some <coughs> some private citizens may want to do something uh, inside that are citizens of this county. And if they have to pay for additional services and so forth, they're actually being double dipped because they pay taxes also. I'm wondering if, and I'm just asking a question, would this be more applicable to people from outside of our county that want to come in and do a big event rather than strapping everybody to this? I'm just asking the question. 
I'm sorry I wouldn't look at that from that standpoint, uh, from the standpoint that, yes, that individual may pay taxes, but those taxes would not, may, maybe would not reimburse the actual cost of all those services. Um, and, and not only that, but I don't know that you could, in fact, have it to where if you're a citizen, you, you don't have to pay, but if you're from outside, you would. I, 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 it's a constitutional problem. Constitutional federal, problem. Federal constitution. <laughs> okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? It, it looks like right now the only person I might get is Joe if he has a Trump contract. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. We're, we're going to move on. <laughs> Okay. Hopefully, we can, I think we've got a few more minutes. Going on. Um, we've got one uh, county manager's comments. I just have a few things. Uh, the first one I did want to report back to you that uh, Borden and I have completed the airport lease with UNC Healthcare. That was mailed off to them last week. Uh, we signed it. They'll sign it. Send me one copy back. So that that's done. Uh, and Bo Borden went back and forth with their attorney several times. That's why it took as long as it did, but uh, we're very comfortable with the lease that we got by. Right. And uh, that's that's the primary thing I had. Other than that, we're just trying to get back to normal operation <coughs> following the storm. Um, and uh, like I said, we'll, we'll be working on that debris contract. Uh, should have everything ready to go on that uh, either this afternoon or first thing in the morning. Okay. Commissioner Bell. I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you, you scheduled the uh, well, interview at the same time of my uh, meeting I had to miss last week. So okay. you owe me that. I owe you that. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Acock. No comments today. Mr. Mayo. I just had a couple. Uh, we had a DSS uh, board meeting last week and uh, very productive. Uh, and there will be more coming out. Uh, in, in the weeks to come as to some uh, possible uh, improvements and the way we do things at DSS. Also, I uh, have already mentioned earlier, being on the uh, Gateway Board, I still call it Gateway. I can't get used to calling it GWTA. <laughs> but the key is, is that I've already mentioned about how good a uh, job Fred Fontana is doing and and I, I like what I see. I like what we're doing for veterans uh, and other people in the county. And uh, that's all my comments. Mr. Cromarty. Well, I went to the same meeting that uh, Mr. Mayo just so I won't repeat anything we've already talked about, Fred, a good job. And I think probably the comparison is that the uh, tension and uncertainty that that board was in three or four years ago is. Uh, because I'm glad I wasn't attending it back then, but it's a pleasure to go over there now and look at the creative things they're doing. Uh, yesterday I had the, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, go around the county just a little bit with some uh, state level people uh, and talk to some folk who have been displaced from the hurricane. And that was an enlightening moment uh, because the, my interaction with the hurricane prior to that was only in Mount Olive and it was so, and the things that I was involved in was so positive and so well run that it sort of gave you a false sense of it wasn't that bad. And Mount Olive didn't suffer that bad, but uh, some of the other parts of the county really did. Um, and so it was, uh, it was an eye opener to I hope now an ear opener to listen to some of the situations that uh, some of the folk experience, especially in, this, in and around Goldsboro, uh, having to be transported away from the house on a canoe and situations where the, uh, the water had damaged the uh, infrastructure in the houses, uh, like a two-story house, and folk have, was able to live upstairs but not downstairs, and, you know, just a amazing thing so uh, uh, while the county is doing good there's still a lot of stuff out there for uh, officials and people who are can do something about it 
to do something about the situation that folk are in. So that's, that's not a solved issue yet. Uh, we went to several churches, and one of the things that was brought up to me, Mr. Wood, was the tipping fee at the landfill for churches hauling their debris out there. Is that wavered or is that? Uh, I it's mean, waived for everybody if it's storm related. If it's storm related, it's, it's storm waived. related. It's waived, and I think we did it for about 45 days. If we find it's going to take longer, we can come back and extend that. I got the impression from this particular person uh, that they had already gone out there, and, and and he said, "Please mention this. It won't." And I'm quoting. He said, "It won't help us now, but it may help someone else." So I got the impression they must have been charged, because, and I know there's a move because a week or so ago. It was piled all over the yard. Mm -hmm. Yesterday it was gone. So, yeah. uh, he, um, he he sounded like he got charged. Well, he may have. I mean, if he, you know, if you if you don't let us know it's storm related, then we and, and, we would and, have and no way of knowing that. I'd say, and it may have been. Uh, I, I didn't quiz him as to did he take it or he just gave me the impression it won't wait for that. Okay. I, uh, but it has been waived. Our right. people know to waive it, yeah. um, so that if people take it in, the, if it's storm related, well, that sounds like it'll help uh, everybody. We, you know, that's going to raise some issues because you know, like if somebody's getting the aluminum siding replaced on their house, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, that's how do honest. we really know? Hell but, yeah! But we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt on that. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Gurley. Yes, uh, watch board met last week and. Mr. Sam Hunter, chairman of the watch board, and Mr. Murray Porter want to be expressed to each of the commissioners and county staff the very appreciative commissioners increased funding this year. And they recently had a golf tournament fundraiser. And with the help from the hospital and the staff there this year, they grossed $125,000 most ever to help with the watch program. And Mr. Porter, especially want to say many, many thanks to. Um, everyone that helped with this event. Thank you. Just a couple things. Um, so last Thursday we went to that leadership luncheon and um, Wayne was there as well. And I thought the folks that were presenting did a, did a really good job. I, I enjoyed that. And Thursday evening I went to Newburn to the um, Workforce Board Banquet and as I walked in, Tammy Childers, the director, walked up to me and said, uh, Commissioner Wiggins from Jones County can't be here tonight. Will you make these remarks? So <laughs> I got the opportunity to speak to the whole group. Um, we did have a Wayne County winner, um, Kathy Stickles, who works with the community college, who works with Workforce Solutions. She's stationed over there, was um, received the award for staff going over and beyond. I can't remember the title of the thing, but I was glad to see Wayne County got recognized, and, and it's, it was a good evening. I had a good time, and that's it, Mr. Chairman. I want to remind everyone that early voting is going on currently, uh, and not only that, but uh, through Saturday, if you are not registered to vote or have not been registered to vote, you actually can register and vote uh, through Saturday. Uh, Saturday at 1 o'clock is the end of early voting. I uh, want to remind everybody that n next Tuesday uh, is Election Day. And I think most of us have recognized that uh, this is an extremely important election, and I encourage everyone to, to go out and vote. Um, the Veterans Day Parade is on schedule for November the 11th. Um, the time is at 10.45. Uh, actually, uh, I think it starts at 11. Um, but I encourage everyone to attend the Veterans Day Parade. Um, and if there's nothing else, we are going back into closed session. Well, before you do that, can I, can I address one thing? Sure. Uh, I got a call from Kendall about a quarter of 11, and we have a, a problem at the jail. We have two chilling units on that jail, and we just lost one of them. So uh, we're going to do an emergency um, quotation on that and try to get that repaired. But those things have to be built. So we're trying to cut the um, time on that. But I want you to be aware of that. He'll get a refined number for us shortly. 
but um, he says it's going to be in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand dollars. So this, these are original chillers on there. So they're about what twenty four, twenty five years old. Something like that. So. Well, isn't that just he's just full of good news? Today. Yeah, that's what I told him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. I wanted y'all to be aware of that. We will be handling that as an emergency purchase because we got to get that up and running right away because the other one is just as old. Um, no parts to repair it? No, it's, it's, that's the useful life. We've, we've done it and done it. Probably over the useful life. It is. Life. It is. Yeah, it's, it's almost appreciated out. Commissioner Mayor. Just refresh my memory. When we did the jail renovation, and we spent like $1.2 million. We didn't do anything to the chiller. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I thought that we did. I thought we did. Thought we well, did. He's telling so me these we, are we, we, replaced, we replaced some big motors or something I, I down think here. we did, in fact. He's uh, telling me motors. these are the original chillers. Well, they're, they're yeah. the original chillers, but, but the motors. I think we did some. We did some motors. Put some, some new motors I'll on. I'll check with him. Well, at least it's fall. One more time. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's true. Well, but it could take, and he did indicate it could take two to three months to get the repairs done. So, in the meantime, we're on one unit. I wanted y'all to be aware of that. It must be. All right. Uh, do I have a motion? We're going to close session for the purpose of consulting with an attorney to uh, preserve the attorney client privilege. So moved. All right. We've got a motion. Uh, all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Excuse me. Good night. I'm Deal. sorry, uh, Mr. Pa uh, Commissioner Payton. Hey, I'm supposed to consider the uh, fitness for appointment of a public employee. Do we need to modify our motion? Yes. Would you modify your motion? So, <laughs> mo so modified. Okay. So All those in favor of the modification, please indicate by raise your right hand. Okay. Thank you. Board of Commissioners back into the session. Um, do I have a motion as a new board clerk at $47,000 a year? I've got a motion in favor of the motion. Any further business? Um, based on this overtime thing, I've given you the memo that uh, we've come up with a uh, discussion. Uh, since this does uh, involve some exceptions to our normal policy, uh, vote on this to do what this lays out. Which it out earlier. It's the one in Angie Boswell that was sent. It was based on our previous discussion. No, I left mine with Gerald Lynn. It's going to be a motion. He, he, he asked me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> If it's a discussion on this matter, would it be possible that we forego the, 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 the motion on this matter until our next meeting? I would like for us to vote on this because the, most of the employers that are involved in this are waiting for an answer and All right. it's not going to be any different. All right, will you make a motion? A motion to what? <laughs> to, it's to adopt what, what I gave you there yeah, as, what, as what went out to our department heads. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a uh, from uh, and Angie Bob saying describing uh, the policies of employees living south of the Neuse River and uh, employees that are exempt and non-exempt. Um, let's see what else when they. That, that would be it uh, basically, but uh, we will attach motion. this memo to the motion. Right. Yeah, she'll fine just clerk attach she'll the copy it into the memo. Yes. Attach the memo to the motion. All right. Does everybody understand we are basically voting to approve the the um, email and the policy of payment of employees uh, to the store? Okay. And, and uh, to make a uh, kick off of that. All right. There's a motion on the floor. Is any? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I'd like to, to do amendments. Um, north, because south of the new, uh, had it fell under the uh, disaster policy, that employees that came to work at a county office building would come to work or also be uh, paid under the inclement weather policy provision. 
I'll make that in form of a motion. All right, so you're adding that to your motion? Yes, yeah, but I want to be clear. This is just power only. County office needs work. That's it. The motion. Uh, motion on the motion. I, I agree. Uh, amendment is 21st cent central for electric power systems and, of course, our computer programs and servers and uh, software that uh, runs a daily fund. It's ones that were work building the county of power and were excused to go home to be paid as well. Any other discussions? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, signify by raising your right hand. Okay, you're making sure oh, well, that's the motion with the amendment. That's the motion with the amendment. Okay. Well, that was your motion. You amended your own motion, that, so it's all did. inclusive it's in all one motion. It's all inclusive. That's good. Yeah. So, and adding that. Yes, sir. That sir. Appeared at work, but did not have power on the county of Porter to yeah. so be covered as those south. Right, some more discussion? All those in favor should signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed to the motion signify by raising your right hand. Three, three, vote. Come of our three, three votes. Uh, yes. Okay. Is there any further business that we need to come before the board? Straight adjournment. Long, long day. <laughs>